But here's the thing. I think that chapter 18 is probably, will be probably the most practically useful chapter for you for this project. Because chapter 18 is all about design, primarily visual design. And what you're doing is really a design challenge, a visual design challenge. You need to have a card. You need to make it easy to use. That means being very smart about your visual design. So in chapter 18, Johnson Sheehan defines what he calls principles of design. A little idiosyncratic, but we'll roll with it. Balance, alignment, grouping, consistency, and consistency is ugly twin brother contrast. And the rest of chapter 18 is basically a, an in-depth description of those pretty commonsensical ideas uh, with examples. So for example, right on the next page, on page 43, um, Johnson Sheehan gives two visual examples of what he means by balance versus unbalance. Looking at, for folks that have the textbook, for those Two visual examples on 483 at the top of the page, you know, imagining that those boxes are filled with text. Which one is more balanced than the other? One on the left. Do you like the one on the left better? If you're 90% of the population, yes. Because most people, by an overwhelming majority, prefer balance. We visually seek balance in the world. Now, there might be some reasons why you would not play into that purposefully. Like let's say that you want your, the reader of your OSHA fact card to be a little on edge about it. Like maybe it's a conscious decision because you're trying to break through this I'm in vulnerable shell anyway. So as about you maybe, maybe you design a layout that's actually purposefully unbalanced because it, it kind of gets their attention visually and also like kind of puts them on edge a little bit. You, you want that. Maybe. Just throw out ideas. But the core idea is that the idea of balance, what it means and how to use it, it's not rocket science. Pretty intuitive. Okay. And the same thing with the rest of these. And so, uh, well, here, let's do this. Let's talk about something specific. And I can also demonstrate to you how you can get a lot of mileage out of not much when it comes to analyzing why do this instead of that, why do that instead of this. Um, Folks are familiar with the splash page for my top level docfricky.com, right? Okay, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about just this little section of it. Got some boxes with some text. Got a headline. That's it, that's all you got. Um, is there anything you can say about balance for just looking at that? Pretty well balanced. What, what's balanced? Boxes are all the same size and the same distance apart. Boxes are all the same size and the same distance apart. Do you like that? It's easy to look at. Yeah, it makes it easier for your eyes to find stuff. Right? <coughs> um, what about the text in the boxes? Anything balanced about that? It's like centered. Yeah, it's centered. Do you like centered? Yeah, it makes the edges kind of jagged. Would you prefer left justified, right justified, center justified? I think in this context, center is right. It's more symmetrical center. Yeah, okay. Here's something about the balance. <coughs> single simple web page, home page, home page, single simple web page. Huh. First line of each text, click here for the day by day, click here for the top level, click here for the top level, click here for the day by day. And even your little icon. Detailed calendar, professional report writing, intro to technical writing, detailed calendar. That's interesting. And which, like, is all the text the same length? No. 
Pretty two middle ones are longer. Two middle ones are longer. Does that seem weird to you? I mean, it looks right. <laughs> Somehow it looks right. So there's that. <coughs> what about um, alignment? There's actually a fancy technical term that you could use to describe alignment, but like in just everyday terms, if I said to you, like if you if you weren't looking at this web page, I was just describing it to you. Hey, it's got four boxes, blah 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 blah. How would you describe how they're aligned? Evenly. I mean, they're either aligned or unaligned, I guess. They're horizontally aligned. Like, yeah, like, they're on the same line. Yeah. They're horizontally aligned. Right? Which is actually getting close to what the technical term would be, but the e they're all on a line left to right. Right. Why? Why didn't I make them like one up here, one over here? I could have made a square of two and two. Right? Why didn't I do that? Why didn't I just line them all up in the middle? Why did I make them go left to right there instead of something else? You can see it all at once on the screen. Well, that's how people read. You can see it all at once. Although, what happens on a phone? Has anybody ever looked at my site on a phone? No. Really? No. Shocking. Okay. Uh, yeah, they all go. Yeah, then it would. T so it's really two layouts in one. If you are looking at it on a screen that's wide enough to accommodate, because here's what happens. If one of the extra things you get by being in my class here with someone who actually knows how this works. Huh. Right? They do that. Which looks a little, uh, but on a phone they look like that. <coughs> but as soon as your screen is wide enough to accommodate it, they turn into that. Uh, okay, so alignment, left to right. Um, why did I put 3365 on the left and 2311 on the right? Is that just random, do you think? Separated. Do more students in the other class? Mm -hmm. Their class is first in my day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So people go left to right. Which kind of sucks for you people because this means, it, this is the one that you use the most, right? So you got to oh, go all the way around. Or if you're scrolling down, you can, if you do check it on your phone, oh, i got to go all the way down. Why didn't I put you folks first with your schedule first? Do you have more students than I thought? No. No. Do you like my class? Not you? really. <laughs> so, is it just because? Hmm? Is the course orders bigger? I'll give you a clue. You folks hopefully find this useful, but you're not my primary audience for this. You're not. I didn't start creating the Doc Fricky personal branding deal um, until this semester. You know, last semester, this is all you would get. Which you're familiar with effed up web pages because you're used to Blackboard and stuff like that. So. Compared to Blackboard, this is actually pretty good, right? Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this semester, oh no, you also get that. Wow. What's up with that? Um, and here's what's up with it. The audience for this is people that I'm trying to convince to give me a job. Right? Like professional web designers and editors and writers and Apple. So it's nice that you've, I mean, you folks are my excuse for doing this, but you're not actually the audience. The audience is like someone that I'm trying to convince to give me a job. So if I want to suddenly push some person who's thinking about giving me a job and who lands on my splash page towards look at my most impressive stuff, I could do one of two things. I could say, click here first, it's my most impressive stuff, don't click on the rest of this junk. Mm -hmm. Or I could make it the furthest left. Because 
if someone is just randomly clicking, what's the first thing they're going to click on? If this is on a phone, the first box that comes up. If this is on a screen, the thing on the far left, probably. And, I mean, you know, you folks are fantastic, but look at the numbers. 200 level, 300 level. We do more advanced stuff in that class. That's why it's 300 level. So, I want them to click there. So, I shall design the page to maneuver that. Right? I was trying to figure out a way to put the home there instead of the schedule, but then I thought that would actually be too annoying for the folks who will actually be using it. Right? Um, and if you click on the schedule, it's like, oh my god, look at all this stuff that's posted. So that can be impressive too for my prim true primary audience. But anyway, so there's that. So alignment. I put everything on the line, and I decided what went where, probably consciously at every point. Because the left to right alignment then gave me an opportunity to take advantage of, as you intuited, the fact that people generally scan from left to right. Uh, grouping. <coughs> Is there any grouping going on that you could talk about in this just little teeny snippet of one web page? Your whole schedule pages being right next to each other? Yeah. I mean, 3365 is grouped here, 2311 is grouped here, right? Um, but then you also have each home group in the middle. Right. Where are people more likely to go most often? Home. The home page or the schedule page? Uh -huh. Which one do you use? You use a home page more often? Yeah. Yeah. How many people more often go directly to the schedule? Most. But not everybody. But here's the thing. And again, think about scrolling. Think about visually skimming. The first thing you'll notice is what's on the far left. The second thing most people notice is what's at the end or what's on the far right. The stuff in the middle is like, oh, it's in the middle. Um, yeah, so it's grouping within grouping. Mm -hmm. uh, consistency. What's consistent? Okay. So the use of bold, the bold effect is consistent. And so what's the only thing that's bold on that page? The title. Titles. So apparently I've used a consistent bolding strategy to highlight hierarchy. These are titles. Or arguably you could say it highlights a grouping. Titles versus detail. Of course, the titles aren't words, but they're really more icons. And some of them I've used literal icons. The order in the navigation bar at the top is the same. Mm. Really? I didn't notice that. 3365 20 uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yep. That's interesting. I truly was not even thinking of like that. <laughs> But I was probably, you know, I'd probably just done this, but I started working on the menu bar and probably just subconsciously did the same. Probably. Uh, so what what else is consistent about this snippet? The text is identical except for the name of the classes and the words. Pretty much. I mean, everything you need for success is linked to um, nothing is more than three. That's a little different. I mean, I mean between the uh, two home pages and the two scheduled pages, they're identical yeah, yeah, minus the yeah. clash placements. Yeah, and and yeah. the one you said everything is no more, and the other said nothing is more. Yep. That was difficult to maneuver. Actually, can I ask why? Why I did that, or yeah. why it was difficult? Why Why you did it? I did it so that single simple web page, home page, home page, simple web page. Oh no, not that specifically. I meant the uh, the. the why you made the distinction and said everything is no more than three clicks as opposed to nothing is more than three clicks? Because I didn't want to be super obvious of what I was doing. Okay. I wanted to make it look effortless. It actually made it harder. But also someone who right. someone who understands web design would be like, oh, and you didn't mail it in by just copying and pasting and just you actually changed it a little bit and still managed to do that. Okay, I see. You know. Mm -hmm. What else is consistent? I, mean, the size I could list 10 things that are consistent. The size of the box that all your text fits in, they're all the same. Mm -hmm. The icons. Mm -hmm. Colors all the same. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah, especially the, I mean, think about this. These are four different destinations for two different classes. And I don't give you any color cues at all for that. Why would I not do that? Why not make like the background of these boxes one color and the background of these boxes a different color? That would look easier. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think distracting. It would be distracting for you folks because you're of the Apple generation. Well, I mean, it, it would be kind of, it would, it would immediately draw your attention to these two go together and those two go together. Uh -huh. Check this out. This is this will be awesome. <laughs> yeah. What's your initial? I'm be honest. What's your initial reaction to this? Seeing that. It's more busy. Busy. Okay. That think about. Funny. Does the person? Do you think the person who did this knew as much about what they were doing? Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like the colors are getting faded. It's like your eyes drawn yeah. the green one. Yeah. And then the uh, blackboard side. Yeah. It's like you're purposely trying to fade that blackboard side away. You know? there, there's that. <laughs> also, this is probably the least attractive color. Although someone last yeah, class said that reminded them of the Mystery Got Icon. So. There's not a lot of contrast between the words. Yeah. Do these buttons look kind of ghetto to you, folks? Yeah. I, I mean, like, you know, like, uh, I'm not know. it looks like the dude couldn't, like, buy better buttons, right? <laughs> Or didn't know how to make better buttons, which I do, but I just didn't want to put that much effort into it right now. But that's why this is not the landing page. How many people have used this at all? Like yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah. No, to get the blackboard, right? Of course. Yeah, but here, uh -uh. because for this, this is the splash page. This has got a, this is the, so I just imagine what would Apple do? <laughs> because that's my audience. That's what I'm going for. So, what would Apple do? They would give you no visual cues to distinguish between them beyond, I mean, Apple's all about the consistency over visual cue every time. Right. So, I mean, the colors, why gray and black and white? I mean, that's pretty boring because that's what Apple would do. It looks clean. It looks clean. Yeah, there's a reason, there is a reason why. NASA space rockets are white. There's a reason why. It actually makes zero sense to paint a rocket. Because if you imagine, you're putting the paint into space too. Like, why would you do that? And a big rocket, I mean, that's hundreds, if not thousands of pounds of paint. It's important because we don't want it to be like gunmetal gray metal. Mm -hmm. That's a little too close to what it actually is. Yeah? It's a really random question, but mm -hmm. if you weren't, trying to attract Apple, like yep. what Microsoft, I guess, would you do something different? Would you do more color? Yeah, I probably would. I mean, I probably, I would have just gone with the buttons. I would have used buttons. Mm -hmm. I would probably done that. Yeah, I would have at least used two color buttons, like maybe the same color for this, but a different color for that, instead of this click me. You know, and the one kind of Microsoft thing that this has going on, and it kind of explains, you know, the, if you think about the audience I'm going for, this will make sense to you. Mm -hmm. Like the only thing that's in color in this whole section of the website is that. It literally says click me. Um, you folks are of a generation, you don't need something to literally say click me to intuit what you can click, right? Some people do, however, especially if they're on a phone. So like these, if you hover over them, oh, well that's obviously an active link, right? Because for consistency, everything that's clickable Look at that, it has the same green color saying, hey, I'm green, follow me, right? Um, this, however, is the only thing for contrast, this is the only thing that is not black or gray on hover because there might be some older folks who are looking at my site who I want to prompt, like my parents, for example, that are just thrilled by something. Um, so. So if I were going full Apple, I would have just mm -hmm. got rid of that completely and these boxes would have been up there. Um, and in fact, if I went full, full Apple, I probably wouldn't have even made this a hover contrast. I probably would have just left that as well. It would just be black no matter what because any self-respecting Apple user would intuit that if you see a capital letter H-E-R, if you see it all caps here, that's clickable. Right? You don't really need the extra hover thing. But yeah. 
I don't know, on Blackboard, the black that doesn't change, that, that got me for a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. That took a while. Well, and also in Blackboard, so first of all, it doesn't give you any visual cues that, oh, this is in fact a link. Does it even give you any text cues? No, it like all not at all. Click, click around yeah, it just has a class title. It's yeah. like, oh, well, sure, you're psychic. Not all of them even are clickable. Those black links can be. I know. Yeah. So then it's like, oh, fooled you. <laughs> yeah, Blackboard's great. I love it. And it crashes every time. Well, then there's that. Yeah, so Blackboard is like, Blackboard is the dot fricky dot com competition. Who do you think is winning? <laughs> of course, that's kind of like coming in first in the Special Olympics. So. <laughs> well, something. Anyway, that started getting dark. <laughs> <laughs> and contrast, you know, okay, we've got contrast with the colors. Aside from that, there isn't a lot of contrast. Because again, I was kind of going full apple on it, right? If I had done a lot of contrast, that would have would have sabotaged some of the things I was trying. So you have to make trade-offs when you're balancing, you know, using, using design. You know, sometimes if you do a lot with consistency, well, obviously consistency is a flip side of contrast. You can't have a lot of contrast if you've got mostly consistency. You know, that's like having mostly yang and a majority of yang too. You no, know, they're the flip side, right? Um, you know, grouping, sometimes uh, you can't do much with grouping without screwing up an alignment that you really want to make happen, right? Sometimes, uh, that, I mean, these are trade-offs. These are trade-offs. But here's the point, here's the take-home. Um, beyond just, hopefully Dr. Fricky's website doesn't suck. Um, beyond that, um, the take-home is, we just talked for what, almost half an hour, 20 minutes at least, about just this. Okay. And I, I made, I mean, we just touched on some of the decisions that I made. We could probably list 20 specific decisions I made about what do I do here. Probably 30 if we went really deep into the wording itself. You know, why did I do every, I could, I could talk about why I did every in all caps. I mean, this is not grammatically correct, right? Every, all caps, and then T-H-I-N-G, and all jam together, what's up with that? That was a conscious decision for a specific effect. So, I could write a paragraph about that. But the point is, um, this, and this is to short circuit what has periodically happened in previous semesters when I asked folks, I've been asking folks to do this project for two semesters now, two previous semesters before you folks, this revision challenge project. And uh, the two previous semesters, one perennial thing I got was, I don't have anything to write about. I don't know what I could write about. I don't think I could even fill you know, a page of memo about describing the decisions I made. Really? Then that's a sign that you're not consciously thinking about what you're doing, which is the whole point of this course, as far as I'm concerned. Um, because I can write 10 pages on just the decisions I made here. And you folks could too, because I mean, all, it wasn't like I told you, here's what I did, here's why, here. I mean, I just asked, how does this reflect alignment? What kind of alignment does it use and maybe why? And you folks were like, well, blah, 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 blah. I mean, again, which gets back to the idea that these concepts are not rocket science, which is maybe why I was thinking about white rockets, but it's, they're pretty commonsensical. The hard part is being mindful and conscious of what you're doing as you're doing it. Concepts are simple. The practice is difficult. So, so getting back to brass tacks, here's what I would do if I were you with the textbook. Um, and this will keep you within the uh, 90 to 120 minutes workload between now and the next time we meet. I would...